I'm standing in front of Secor Dam, as you can see behind me in the background. And before I get this video started, I just want to thank everybody for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. It really helps a lot. And to my patrons, Joanne, John, Deb, and Ron. There was a very special letter that was sent to me by someone who would like to remain anonymous, but I just want to thank you so much. The letter really meant a lot to me. If you want to send me anything, I will pop my P.O. Box address up on the screen right now. Just a quick update on the live camera before we get started here. Uh, Secor Dam has raised a little bit of money towards the GoFundMe page to set up a live camera, 24-7 live camera, like I have on Sanford and Edenville Dams. Uh, if you want to support those efforts, the link to that GoFundMe is in the description down below. But I'm going to go check out one of the locations. Uh, it seems like it's going to be a pretty cool spot to be able to mount this camera. So if you want to get that set up sooner, feel free to go down there and make a donation. You can also donate through my PayPal account. There's a little bit less fees taken out through PayPal than the GoFundMes. I just want to share with everyone that this would be the location that that live camera would actually be mounted when funds are raised. It's located at the Secord Fire Department. Uh, they have a tower right there behind the fire department. This would be a great spot to mount it. We can see all the embankment work over on the right hand side and a pretty clear view of the back side of the dam and downriver. So when work begins here, uh, that would be a great spot to put this camera. It was raining out a little bit this day, but the run was perfectly fine. And here's a nice overhead look of Secord Dam. But let me turn the camera around now and we'll look here at Secord Dam a little bit closer. So a lot of the repairs are done. This training wall down here that was being repaired last time I was here is all set up. All the forms have been removed and that looks really good. I already flew the drone. And over here on the right hand side, this training wall has not been repaired yet, so that still needs to be done. They also took some of these stone and kind of filled in this area here, uh, removed a little bit of the sediment that was over here on this side. And now they're forcing all this water through this kind of opening here in the middle. This is really a lot easier to see from the drone as well. I'm not sure why they're forcing this amount of water through this small opening. I would think that they would actually erode that area a little bit more, but there has to be a reason for them doing it and forcing it away from the banks towards the center of the river. And here's the downriver portion. So water flows underneath the bridge here and heads on downstream. I think there's also been a little bit of erosion work happening here and we can definitely see how much higher the tainer gates are now they got those new shackles bolted on and are able to raise that up higher that's for when there is a lot of flow coming from upriver, trying to pass through this dam those gates are raised as high as possible now to allow all that water to flow through here uh, all the snow has melted all that spring melt has already passed through this area now so it doesn't look like they need to be that high but for in the future, over the next couple of years, when repairs are ongoing here at Secord Dam to bring this back up to today's standards, it may be needed. Looks like there's actually quite a bit more security up here on the top of Secord Dam. You know, they got gates up now that you're not able to go in here and park. Uh, this area that I'm standing is public access though, so they're not able to actually fence this off and block this off, but I am staying off the property right now there's no one working on here, so I don't want to go in here and trespass. But yeah, you're able to see a lot of the work that is ongoing from the drone. So let's hop on over to that video now and I'll do a little bit of voiceover and kind of describe what's going on here. Also at the end of the video, I know a lot of you like when I went over the engineering diagrams and kind of the descriptions of what's going to happen when this dam is repaired. So if you want to check out that again, I will be doing that again at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. Jumping into the drone video now, we can see all that nice riprap they have lining the water's edge now uh, and kind of how it's converging there in the bottom center of the screen. But we have Secord Dam right here in the middle of the screen. Again, the flows passing through here are not very high right now. Uh, there's not a whole lot of water since all that snow, uh, springtime thaw melt has already passed through. A couple months ago, we are getting a couple cold temperatures here and there every now and then yet, but Hopefully our snow is done. Now I'm gonna go ahead, tilt the camera up, and we can take a look at Secord Lake or what is left of Secord Lake. Still looks like the water on that side of Secord Dam is pretty deep. 
I know there's been a couple people that actually ventured and did put some pontoons in the water, but with all the stumps that are in and around the water's edge and in the center of this lake, uh, you definitely want to be careful so that you don't bust a prop off in one of these stumps. So I'm going to keep flying north a little bit. We can see the spring trees are just starting to bud out. This shot was facing towards the north, and now this shot here is facing towards the south. So we are on the lakeside, the upriver side of Secord Dam, facing and flying towards the south. Uh, altitude's not very high, probably only about 50 to 100 feet. You can see that they do have a couple of timber mats on the right-hand side of the dam. This must be for future work that is ongoing here. Uh, I did notice though that kind of right there in the middle between the two gates and over on kind of the hydroelectric gate portion, it does look like they have some water sensing capabilities now. Those, those cylindrical white tubes, I'll actually highlight this with a box around it as I get in closer to the gates. Um, you can see where those new shackles are welded onto the gate to be able to raise it up even that much higher than before. Uh, the old shackles and gate chains. We're not able to get these gates up as high as they currently are. Uh, we can kind of see that on the water level on the right-hand side of the screen that their maximum height was probably a foot lower than their current positions. So now that these gates are that much higher, they'll be able to pass that much higher flows in case it is needed in the future. Go ahead and I'll do a little bit of a pullback shot and we'll head directly over the top of Secord Dam and get that bird's eye view of what things look like from the air. You can see a little bit of that downriver portion uh, where that water is converging in the middle. I'm guessing that this is being forced to the middle of the river to kind of stop some of that erosion from the sides of the banks. And now I'm going to go ahead, come right over the top of the dam, and we'll be able to see that water passing over the top. Again, it, not a lot of water from the looks of it. Um, can be deceiving though. It's definitely a lot more powerful than it looks right here at the bottom of the dam. I'll go over a little bit of the engineering diagrams at the end of this video and it's kind of interesting that they're actually going to put some concrete steps like they did in the Tobacco River Dam on the backside of the spillway. Go ahead and tilt the camera back up now and we'll take a look downriver. So we can kind of see a little bit of that training wall that's been replaced on the right hand side. Those white tubes are coming out of there. Those white tubes are to drain excess water that's inside of the embankment downriver. I'm trying to get as much of that moisture out of the embankment to stop it from failing as possible. I'll get a look on the left hand side a little bit closer when I go ahead and spin the drone around and we can see that the repairs on that side have not been made yet. This is Secord Dam Road in the middle of the screen now. Uh, it's actually Secord Dam Bridge. And now I'm downstream, downriver, flying towards the north again. And we can see that water level is not too high, probably only a foot or two in the middle. And now I'm gonna go ahead and fly directly underneath the bridge and come right up to Secord Dam. So we'll get a close up look at that training wall that's been repaired over on the left hand side and then we'll go take a look at the right hand side that has not been repaired yet. I'll actually pop up a little bit of video from the last time I was out here showing that these repairs were in progress. They were just working on installing the rebar so that they were going to be able to pour the concrete. So all that has now been set up, the forms have all been removed and there was those pipes exiting the side of that concrete form. All right, you can see the work that's going on here right now. Uh, just putting the forms in place that they're gonna be pouring this concrete next week. All the rebar you can say is put in here now too. Some blocks up here keeping the water from flowing in this direction. You can see the ice buildup up there. Uh, they're also gonna be doing the welding up there on the tainer gates next week and doing the repair work over on the other side of the spillway. So definitely work is progressing really fast here really exciting and uh, I'm gonna get out of these guys here so they can get back to work now. Now I'll go ahead and pan the drone to the right and tilt the camera up a little bit. We're looking directly to the north yet up at the Tainer gates on Secord Dam and seeing all that white water rushing over the top. Now over here on the right side this training wall is in pretty bad shape yet. 
it's all outlined in orange, the areas that need to be repaired. I'm not sure why they haven't started to work on this yet, but hopefully work will start progressing very soon over here. You can see the water level is only at level one. I'm not sure if those are feet. Kind of looks like feet, so about one foot there. I'm guessing those white pipes over on the other hand side are measuring the water depth as well. Now we'll come right into the powerhouse section. Uh, that circular area in the middle of the screen is where the turbine is housed. And this kind of metal gate structure here in the middle of the screen uh, looks kind of rickety. I'm not sure what that was used for and what purpose that would entail, but we can see that they do have some kind of metal cables attached to that gate and they are able to raise and lower it. There's a little bit of water exiting the bottom of that turbine housing area, that concrete cylindrical structure there. Go ahead and tilt the camera up now. We can see the door where people would actually access this area. A couple bird's nests looks like they're up in there. Barn swallows are gonna start coming back very soon. And there's where those cables go, um, kind of up into the powerhouse floor um, above that concrete. You can see the bottom of the concrete structure here is in pretty bad shape too. That rebar is exposed and rusting and that concrete is just all flaking off. Um, doesn't look that great so hopefully they're going to go ahead and repair this soon like I said. Now I'll go ahead and pan the camera back to the left hand side. Kind of get a different perspective of the water coming over that sill. So right here would be that new concrete uh, stepwise spillway that would then flow down into the new sill. And there's that concrete that was poured for the repair on that side training wall. And now I am actually facing towards the west, heading towards the south. So a lot more of that rip rep that's in place. And this actually looks like some nice river rock that they use, not some busted up uh, stone that's usually used for riprap. And now I'm flying towards that converging position where they're forcing all that water towards the center of the river. And as I kind of gain altitude a little bit and tilt the camera downward, we can see that it has eroded the bottom of the river a little bit here where that water is flowing very fast, um, pretty much down to our bedrock here which is clay here in Michigan. I'm going to keep gaining altitude a little bit, but the sun glare did start getting into the way. So jumping into the next video here, uh, this is up at 400 feet in altitude, though this is kind of our legal limit with the drone. And I'll fly right up towards the bridge area, but we can kind of see the aerial view from this uh, high altitude and what things look like from the air. Sure makes things look a lot smaller, but we can see the kind of electrical station over on the right hand side and the parking lot over there as well. I'll be heading over there next and right after this video and we'll take a look at the kind of drill rig that you see on the left hand side of the screen as well now sitting on the embankment. So still up at 400 feet in altitude, but now I'm facing towards the south and we can kind of see how windy the Titabwasi River is as it heads down to Smallwood Lake and then reaches Smallwood Dam. After that, it then goes to the Wixom Lake and then the Edenville Dam. So I'm gonna kind of tilt the camera down a little bit towards Secord Dam again, and I will start dropping in altitude uh, very shortly. We can kind of see how they're accessing the site over on the right-hand side. They've did a little bit of grading work and putting in kind of sloping of that driveway and the power switching station is over on the left hand side of the screen. Got a little bit of a clump of trees here. Hopefully these do not get in the way of the live camera when I go to install that on the Seacord fire tower. I do want to mention that I do have approval to install that camera on the tower. So all we are waiting on is for funds to be generated and to reach the goal uh, to be able to install that camera. This is the parking area, kind of where they have that bobcat sitting right now, as well as a few pieces of their other equipment. We can see all those pipes that are exiting the embankment. And then I'm going to drop an altitude right above this drill rig, and we'll see their operation a little bit closer. 
They have a pipe coming from the north side of Secord Lake. Looks like they're able to pump water out of the lake into that um, white container for storage. And we can see a little bit of the drills on the right hand side of the screen right in front of that table they have set up. So I'm not entirely sure what this rig is set up here for, but I'm guessing they are taking soil samples of the embankment, um, probably testing the integrity to see how far gone it is, uh, how much water seepage there is, if there are any holes in it, if it's sloughing off in places, what the composition actually is of the embankment. So there's a lot of things that they're probably looking at here. And now coming a little bit closer, can't really see the hole where they were actually digging in front of the rig here. It's pretty filled up with kind of the, the clay uh, sediment. And over on the right hand side, there's a, a tub here that looks like it's empty, but I'm guessing they use this for kind of analyzing their samples and kind of looking at the composition, seeing if there's any gravels in it, if it's clay, or if it's just all kind of sand from the other side of the lake, which most of these dams are just built with the sandy soil from the northern sides of the lakes that was dredged and used as fill. Now, panning towards the left, so facing west right now and heading towards the south. This used to be the parking lot that was kind of open when Boyce had the dams. It looks like Four Lakes Task Force has now installed the gate so that people are not able to come in here and park. This used to be where I used to park when filming these dams, but looks like we're no longer going to be able to do that. I sure hope that there's a public access to these dams when they are repaired. Uh, at the very least, a public parking area and a canoe portage so that people are able to go from the north side to the south side of the river and continue on their way down. Here's that bobcat, it's a Cat 279D. Not sure what they were really using that for, but it must be some of this work that is ongoing here. Now I'm flying back towards the north. We're just going to come right over the top of the embankment and you can see the water level, how low it is on the other side here. Now let's jump into the engineering diagrams and details. The estimated cost to repair Secord Dam is at 24 million right now. There are 2,015 waterfront properties and the estimated lake return date is between 2022 and 2024. Uh, the estimated annual capital assessment range is between $237 and $339. That's per each property. Let's jump over to the next slide now. This is kind of showing the estimated date range of when these things are going to be running. Uh, so financing, engineering, bid letting, and construction, they're running all these process in parallel to shorten the timeline as short as possible. But we can see construction here is in November 2022 to spring of 2024. So these date ranges are very wide and they can fluctuate depending on the things above them. Uh, financing doesn't come through, it's gonna push everything else later, as well as delays in each one of these will push this end date as being later and later. Here is the actual plan for the Secord Dam. Just kind of the large overview. We'll go into each one of these in a little bit more detail, but we have the Secord Dam over here. Uh, the embankment all along here, the emergency spillway that comes here and comes down here to the downstream portion. Now let's jump into these in a little bit more detail and kind of see what we have going on here. Uh, this channel here is going to be aligned with Rip Wrap. This is the current parking area and they have some proposed sacrificial access culverts here that you're going to be driving over the emergency spillway to access that parking location. Um, this is currently the existing switch yard. Uh, they're going to keep that even though they do not plan on using this dam for hydroelectric power, but you never know what's gonna come through in the future. They're also installing the sheet pile cutoff wall down into this embankment. So now we're looking at the dam up close. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit blurry. These are just the images that are provided by the Four Lakes Task Force. So hopefully these are a little bit better quality, a little bit closer to the construction, but we have the two bays here, uh, the crest gates installed on here. This is the powerhouse, and they are going to install a stepwise concrete chute like they did on the Tobacco River Dam here. And then again, kind of just fill in riprap downstream and then we're going to resurface the concrete apron down here 
and construct a new incel. So that's kind of looking at the dam. There's a little bit more detail that you may be able to make out, but really these are just the kind of crest gate details. We'll look at the crest gates at the end of the slides as well. Here's the emergency spillway up close. We have lots of riprap in front of the spillway. The channel is going to be lined with riprap as well. Uh, they're going to have a concrete sill, flashboards up here, and then they kind of have this kind of coffer dam here. And then over here, there's a couple proposed culverts. But yeah, this whole embankment will have uh, the sheet pile cutoff wall in it, as well as on we're here on this side. This is kind of looking at the embankment itself. So this is showing that sheet pile cutoff wall that is hopefully going to stop water that is on the uh, north side of Secor Dam from seeping through the embankment and coming through. They're planning on catching that water when it's seeping through and depositing it downstream so that it's not just flowing through. Currently in this embankment, they have a lot of pipes that are just running through it, trying to drain uh, that water out of the embankment downstream. Of course, there's no water coming through those pipes right now because there's hardly any water on the north side of Secord Dam. Here's those crest gates that I was talking about. So they're going to remove the tainer gates that are currently being used on these dams, and these are the new crest gates. Uh, they have the hydraulic kind of ram here that opens and closes these gates. This one is in the closed position. This one is in the open position. Uh, walkways across the top. But these gates are being used over the tainer gates because during times of heavy flow, like in the springtime, uh, when all that snow melt comes down, these gates can't really be overwhelmed. The I guess they can be overwhelmed, but the tainer gates kind of open in this stepwise fashion. I'll go back to the slides and kind of describe this a little bit better, but those tainer gates open up here. Um, they reach a maximum opening position, and then they actually will start blocking that water flow from going over here. These crest gates, if the water flow gets too high, uh, it just goes over these gates a little bit higher um, up until you kind of get this walkway bridge. But yeah, there's nothing really blocking the water from coming over the top of these gates. Let's jump back to the beginning. Here's those tainer gates. So see how high they are right now. This is in the, the even greater raised position since Fisher kind of rebolted on those new shackles and raised these out of the way a little bit more. But these gates used to be sitting at their maximum height down in here. Uh, that was actually blocking some of the water flow when the Edenville Dam embankment broke. Down there at Sanford Dam, it wasn't able to pass that heavy flow because these tainer gates were actually blocking the upper level position. If we had crest gates in here, that water would just flow over the top. So that's kind of the engineering aspect. I know a lot of people enjoyed me kind of going over the engineering diagrams and descriptions in the last video I did. So if you enjoyed this one as well, make sure you let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.